New CDC guidance applies to residents and staff equally, and a Virginia facility pays $90,000 to settle a lawsuit alleging it denied deaf residents admission over extra needs. This and more next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you are a CNA, consider becoming a NACA member for only $30 a year. You can enroll quickly on our website at NACACNA.org. New federal guidance on vaccinations in healthcare settings from the CDC does not differentiate between nursing home staff members and residents, according to a top expert within the agency. The recommendations apply equally to both groups, explained Kara Jacob Slifka, MD, MPH, with the Division of Healthcare Quality Promotion at the CDC. Jacob Slifka led a Q&A session with providers during a leading age conference call on Thursday. She added that the agency is also trying to, quote, figure out and would appreciate suggestions from providers regarding how to differentiate between vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals in various settings without invading the privacy of people. She continued, quote, in a setting where you don't know the vaccination status of individuals, approach the situation as if people are not vaccinated, she said. The same applies for children under the age of 12 who don't have the option of being vaccinated, according to Jacob Slifka. She stated the guidance still allows children to join in visitation, but since they are unvaccinated, the recommendation is that masks be worn during the visits. Jacob Slifka added that the agency officials plan to continue updating the guidance as they learn more details about post-vaccination. A Virginia skilled nursing provider accused of denying a resident admission because she was deaf has settled a federal disability lawsuit for $90,000, the Department of Justice announced this week. The allegations were brought against Brookside Rehabilitation and Nursing Center, a 130-bed nursing home in Warrington, Virginia, and its managers Abraham Gutnicki and Judy Kushner. The case stems from claims that Brookside denied admission to an individual who was deaf because she would have needed sign language interpreting services, which is in violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Gutnicki is part owner of Warrants and Operations LLC, which manages the facility, while Kushner is an executive there, according to federal data. The provider agreed to pay $40,000 to the resident and $50,000 civil penalty to settle the allegations, according to the Eastern District of Virginia's U.S. Attorney's Office. The facility also must adopt new ADA policies to ensure services are accessible to individuals with communication disabilities, designate an ADA administrator, enter into an agreement with sign language interpreting service process, and train staff on ADA effective communication requirements. The new ADA policies must also be adopted by the other eight facilities in New Jersey, Michigan, and Virginia managed by Gutnicki and Kushner under the settlement agreement, according to federal authorities. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.